Okay, so it's me, Jacobs Creek, and my latest request. The recent comments of a Mr. Aaron Ra. Your reputation precedes you, Mr. Ra. That's an interesting name for an atheist, by the way. For the purposes of this conversation, you may call me Mr. Set. I like that name. Not just because it's a corresponding Egyptian deity, but because the word Set, Aaron, is famous for having more definitions than any other word in the English language. Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, at, at, at Webster, I suppose. I'm guessing that's your favourite. First of all, just for funsies, you'll notice the word Ra really does have one definition, and one definition only, according to the dictionary. And I suppose that means you can only possibly be an Egyptian deity, Mr. Ra. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm lacking, Aaron. I, I'm being droll. Let's have a look at Set. See, between the, uh, the verbs and transitive verbs and nouns and adjectives and idioms, there are well over a hundred official definitions of the word set. Isn't that interesting? And, and this isn't a modern development. Even in Johnson's original manuscript, there were several pages devoted to the word set. It, yeah, it's because there's so many different disciplines which refer to a specific time or space or action as a set. But you see, Aaron, a set means the burrow of a badger. That is the only thing set means. Because I say so, and I want, and me, and la la la, I'm not listening, I am a fundamentalist of whatever passage of whatever book I feel like, because that is how things work. Also made a comment about me using the dictionary definition, which, by the way, the, is the one and only definition of feminism. Let's have a look, see, shall we? Which of these definitions are you talking about, Aaron? There are two here. If you take the first without the second, like you do, it means gender egalitarianism in theory. But if you take the second without the first, which you also do, it means female supremacy in practice. For instance, when a legal system such as ours gives women the right to murder their husbands and not be charged with murder, that, according to definition two there, is a feminist act. But it is absolutely fuck all to do with equality of the sexes. Men have never, anywhere at any point in history, had the right to murder their wives and not be charged with murder. There is no such thing as battered husband syndrome, and there never has been. And yet along came feminists using battered wife syndrome as an excuse for giving women superior rights to men. I'm not talking about holding doors open and who pays for dinner. I'm talking about the right to murder innocent people, Aaron. Already in many regions, there is no such thing as marital homicide. In such regimes, when a man kills his wife, it's called femicide. Which is not just murder, it's hate murder. And when a woman kills her husband, it's called... He obviously deserved it. She was obviously hormonal. Acquit, acquit. Nothing to see here. If you put this on the news, you'll never work in this town again. And this is feminism. Aaron, as defined by the dictionary, because it is organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. You can do that without any concern for equality, and it still counts as feminism. Because according to you, Aaron, not only is the dictionary an unquestionable holy scripture, but you are also allowed to cherry-pick whichever contradictory passages you like from it, and it still counts as holy and unquestionable. 
but that's not still necessarily used. what feminists do. Still though. used. Did you hear what he said there, Aaron? That's not what feminists do, though. Defining yourself as something is not the same as doing something. If someone claims to be a pacifist while beating the shit out of someone, you have to weigh their actions against their self-definition and see if you can spot any signs of intellectual dishonesty. Still used by feminist organizations. Organizations? So, organizations have authority, do they? Does that go for religion too? Are you okay with religion as long as it's organized religion? Let's have another look at the dictionary, shall we? Wait, uh, well, look at that. It, it's just beliefs. Aaron, look, a person who believes, one who professes a belief. Why do you have an issue with Christians? All they do is believe things. Yeah, you what, mate? Uh, there's nothing in here about crusades and inquisitions. What are you on about? It doesn't say anything about killing anyone or hurting anyone or oppressing anyone. And if anyone does that shit in the name of Christianity, they're obviously not Christians. I mean, it says so right here in the scripture. By definition, the only thing Christians do is believe in Christ. What's your fucking problem, dude? Why do you have to spawn with Christians with all this hate? And I just, I, I, in a couple of months ago, I attended a feminist convention just out of curiosity i attended a feminist convention wherein they all use that same definition and it's the only one that they are aware of <laughs> yeah. yes the awareness spectrum of any given feminist at any given moment is indeed incredibly narrow i'll give you that but that's not what they do in practice that's not what they do they but do. that is exactly what they do in practice as i just explained in practice aaron all you explained is that they define themselves as perfect and benevolent agents of moral good at all times and in all circumstances. To, at the very least, that is not what scientists call practice. That is, however, what the clergy calls practice. You have not described any action other than the blind declaration of revealed wisdom, Aaron. This this is why the atheism movement is a joke now. Because people like you can pull this shit and then call yourself a free thinker. You do exactly with feminism what Christians do with God. And you do exactly with the dictionary what Christians do with the Bible. You decide they prove each other. You link them together in a titanium nipple ring of circular reasoning and then you bitch at everyone else for doing the same thing. You have no fucking principles whatsoever. You just have a tribe and a book and enough double think flavored Kool-Aid to last a lifetime. I would call you pitiful, but I do not afford you any pity. I went to a convention of feminists where just out of curiosity, just to make sure that they are using the same one and only definition. And in fact, they are. Oh, hey, um, I also went to a convention. Uh, it's a long story and I won't bore you with it. Let's take another angle. Have you been to a Christian convention? Do they actually talk about how much they hate atheists and want to strip them of their rights? Or do they just praise Jesus and shit? They just praise Jesus and shit, don't they? They don't give a fuck about atheists. Funnily enough, though, when you guys have conventions, you actually sit around dissing Christians. <coughs> but not Muslims, weirdly enough. And now you've moved on to sitting around dissing straight, white, cisgendered males. Because you don't actually have any ideas of your own. You're just lazy, jealous pricks. You never cared about reason. You only ever cared about appearing intellectually superior because that makes it easier for you to appear morally superior. <clears throat> and you might now you might say all i do is talk about how much i hate feminists for the record i try not to hate people or even ideas i try to reserve hatred for myself it's the only place it's ever been useful but the thing is when i argue against 
the the tenets of feminism, usually via a feminist, <clears throat> the rest of the world, and even the rest of the manosphere, responds by telling me, all you guys ever do is oppose feminism. You don't have any ideas of your own. <clears throat> and then, when I talk about men's issues and men's vulnerabilities and how to approach solutions to these things, like giving men reproductive rights and bodily autonomy, the rest of the world, and even the rest of the manosphere, tells me I'm a whiny piss baby and what I'm doing is impossible because my biological determinism slash my patriarchy delete as appropriate. Incidentally, whenever I say women deserve reproductive rights and genital integrity, the rest of the world and even the rest of the manosphere goes, hell yeah, we agree. And those people over there are doing it wrong. Let's go get them. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite sparing with women's rights advocacy because all around me, I keep hearing it used as a threat narrative against that Oceania we're always at war with. When I say, what about the women? Brown people get blown up. And when I say, what about the men? The only people I piss off are the rich, hissy-fitting cunts who run the Western media. For a satirist, this is a five-star no-brainer. You must understand this. For a satirist with a conscience, anyway. Well, then, well, they may be using that definition, but what they get up to does not reflect the just seeking equality. There's a lot more right. going on. Than, than I, I, I was there with a couple of hundred different people to identify as feminists, and that is exactly what they did do. Okay, so when a couple hundred people get together and they all define themselves as in favor of equality. That is good enough for you. Is that right, Aaron? Because we're having a conference next month here in London, the International Conference for Men's Issues, organized rather painstakingly by Mike Buchanan with a lot of help from the Voice for Men. I'll be there. Honey Badgers will be there. A few miscellaneous e celebs will be there. If you're curious to hear what we talk about, how we walk that tightrope of being whiny, ineffective virtue signalers while simultaneously being dangerous reactionary haters. If you're interested in how we manage to do that, <laughs> check us out. I mean, if you want to follow through with your empirical methodology there, Aaron, please do come to our conference as well. Or just check out the footage and hear what we have to say. Listen to how we define ourselves in relation to equality. Is that going to be your approach to men's rights later on in this conversation? Well, the Who thing is, is I, yeah. I, I, I remember Armored Skeptic saying when he was involved with a Atheism Plus. Atheism Plus, Aaron, do you remember Atheism Plus? I, you know, thank you very much for your anecdote about a group of feminists who define themselves as equality advocates and therefore must be. But we all know and agree that Atheism Plus happened. Don't we? That was a group of feminists. And they were not interested in equality at all. They were interested in rebranding atheism. And ostracizing anyone deemed to be a misogynist. And fear-mongering about imaginary harassment. And quite explicitly trying to co-opt the atheist movement as just another property of the social justice propaganda machine. There was no inequality being addressed there. It was just deluded, power-hungry, moral grandstanding by prominent, self-identifying, non-radical feminists. So, Aaron, does this or does this not 
disprove your hypothesis about feminism being only ever defined as the pursuit of equality. Is it not so that your claim is laid waste by the very existence of Atheism Plus? He had to hide that he was a white male because if they did, if they found out, they would I have immediately no idea put about his Plus opinion down. Atheism Plus because I was never part of it. Atheism Plus despite many allegations to the contrary. That's fucking fascinating, Aaron. Thanks for your life story. I'll give it to the person who asked for it. Listen to me, Aaron. Atheism Plus existed, didn't it? It happened in, in the universe you're talking about. The universe in which you claim no such thing could ever exist. A prominent group of self-identifying feminists engaged in moral thuggery against the atheism community rather than attempting to achieve anything resembling equality. Can you confirm that this happened? I have heard from other people that Atheism Plus was uh, egregious to some degree, but I don't know because I was never involved. I'll take that as a yes. But I won't accept your sudden abridgment of what counts as feminism. You changed it to one that officially requires your personal endorsement, Aaron. See, a moment ago, you defined the only true feminism as proposed equality of the sexes. And now you're, de you're defining the only true feminism as proposed equality of the sexes featuring Aaron Ra. All other contenders are not admissible as true feminism. <laughs> Do you seriously not see what you're doing? I, what, Christians only ever do good things. Uh, what, what about all those bad things? Oh, I, what, 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 I don't know anything about that and I'm not involved. Uh, Westbrook Baptist Church? Well, I don't know anything about that and I'm not a member. Therefore, Christianity didn't do nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Do you, do you see, Aaron, if someone gives you a confirmed example that specifically disproves the essential substance of your hypothesis, then it is not a valid response for you to say, I don't care about that and I'm not involved. <laughs> if someone actually presents you with a black swan, you can't just say, but that's not my black swan. Yeah? That's not a valid response. It's a fucking tantrum. That was you losing the argument. Aaron, that is what it sounds like when a spoiled brat loses an argument. They suddenly decide that shit doesn't exist unless they say so. Yeah, you're not just making rules about sh putting sugar on porridge here. You have crowned yourself as the Emperor of Scotland. And you decided nothing counts as Scotland except whatever soil has been blessed with His Excellency's majestic turn. You'll excuse me if I start skipping sections now. There's quite a lot of this bullshit to get through. When you had the Atheism Plus movement saying that atheism would also include feminism... I thought you said you have no idea about Atheism Plus. You just told the story of it. The Atheism Plus movement saying that atheism would also include feminism. Uh-huh, when some feminists tried to invade and occupy atheism. Yes, we all remember it well. Go on. Since you had this minority faction, did that represent the whole? Did that mean, did that change the definition of atheism? Actually, yes, it kind of did. Before this happened, atheists at least had an internal reputation for being rational. We were like a stronghold of free thinkers up against billions of God's soldiers, so nothing could bring us down. But wouldn't you know it, those billions of pious Avengers couldn't achieve what a few feminists accomplished in a manner of months, the death by infighting of the atheist community. Now people hear the term atheist community and they think of 
some people who got royally punked by a bunch of frumpy crybabies and they've never recovered since. The, you know, the gaming community experienced something of a civil war as a result of the feminist invasion, but they did eventually pull through with, with, with the gamer identity scathed, but, but in one piece. But the atheist community was simply ripped apart by the feminist invasion, and it's never been the same. And it's, and it's left people wondering if it ever was a community of free thinkers, or if it really was just another division of the social justice army. This feminism, Black Lives Matter, the LGBTQ wop de woo de woo community, and the Christians Suck Clubhouse. ISIS welcome. That's all it ever was, wasn't it? And that's your fault, Aaron. It's not just down to atheism plus. It's brick-headed thunder cunts like you and the cold horse piss you are peddling in this very conversation. This is probably why people loosely associate you with atheism plus, because your opinions are indistinguishable from theirs. Every time you speak, you describe their party line, word for fucking word. Your only point of contention with them is their assertion that atheism and feminism should be the same thing. I'm guessing you have no disagreement with their assertion that humanism and feminism should be the same thing. Well, I do disagree with that. I don't think humanism and feminism are compatible or ever have been. And you probably think that makes me an unspeakable heretic, don't you? Because you refuse to register the difference between feminism and women. Or was atheism still always and still now, despite their efforts, just a, you know, a lack of belief in a God? According to the dictionary, yes. And and yes, according to the structural affixture of the word. A field in which you might want to study the word feminism. And in case you haven't noticed, Aaron, they've already moved on. There's nothing left of the bifurcated atheist corpse to feed on. So now they've decided that humanism will also include feminism. Which means it too shall be cleansed of everyone deemed to be a misogynist. I.e. anyone who puts a foot out of line ever. I mean, uh, no wonder you're so reluctant to ever step foot outside your sacred patch of Scotland there. No, I didn't. If they didn't change the definition, then why would some weird subordinate faction or minority group have changed the definition of feminism? They didn't. Feminism has always been the same in principle, and it's not the same as women's rights. Women's rights is the implicitly inclusive advocacy of the rights of women. Feminism is the explicitly exclusive advocacy of the rights of women. It is the advocacy of women's rights necessarily without the advocacy of men's rights or children's rights. Ain't no vaca in the works. So it's rather a nonsense in itself to say that any fringe group of red femmes is going to be responsible for the corruption of feminism. The only difference between radical feminists and moderate feminists is radical feminists are at least honest about their core belief that given the unquestionable history of men oppressing their own women everywhere forever, men must be sociopaths inherently and biologically, and therefore they don't deserve the same human rights women do. The rest of you won't admit to believing that, but you will turn the world upside down rather than acknowledge that this is what patriarchy theory amounts to. 
You can't own your shit, even though you rely on the uncontested orthodox practice of that shit. Because you can't get through your day without that dogmatic, irrational insistence that you are either eternally blameless or eternally powerful. Depending on what gender of feminist you are. There's no confusion as to what kind you are, Aaron. <laughs> you don't need anyone standing up for your rights. You're the fucking sugar daddy, innit? it? Well, the question is, is it a minority group? Because from what you, from the presence on YouTube, it looks like the more... <laughs> yes. Hello. Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> there are almost 100 feminists or feminist channels in my main playlist now. And another 100 over at Honey Badger Radio. I and my fellow critters have amassed about 200 examples and rising of feminists, big and small, and feminist-leaning institutions, big and small, who have all been comprehensively demonstrated to hold views about gender that are unsalvageably regressive, illiberal, and unegalitarian. 200 examples. Aaron, and you are now one of them. And one of the darkest cases I've ever seen. It was quite a bold decision of me to zoom in on your face like this. I feel like I'm arguing with a haunted portrait of a syphilitic Visigoth. The people who advocate themselves as feminists, or certainly the militant for feminists, or the ones that are certainly more visible. Home is behind. There are many paths to tread. To the edge of night All shall fade All shall I must always tear up at that bit I, I, I assume it's because it's a sad song, but I always wonder if what's really making me cry is the soulless shithead stuffing his face in his ivory tower. The people who advocate themselves as feminists, or certainly the militant for feminists, or the ones that are certainly more visible, certainly How do we identify have an... as the militants? How do we identify as the militants? How, are you... What? Certainly the militant for feminists, or the ones that are certainly more visible, certainly How do we identify have an... as the militants? How do we identify as the militants? It's not an identity! Aaron, it's a description! He's describing some hypothetical feminist as militant. Yeah. I, I, some feminists are militant in their feminism, Aaron. And this is describable as militant. You cannot just use this fucked out identity politics to pretend this isn't true. I'm, I'm not straw manning you, Aaron. I'm asking you this question because I'm genuinely flummoxed here. Is this seriously what you're doing? What's that? Misguided feminists, you say? What do you mean misguided feminists? Do they identify as misguided? No, then they're not misguided. Is that what your fucking knee jerk brain did just now? Aaron, feminists cannot be called something unless they identify as it. Is, is that how fucking bleached you are at this point? Because Sorry? everybody I know identifies as a feminist. Uh, was that a slip of the tongue? Or have you honestly never got to know anyone who doesn't identify as a feminist? Because that doesn't speak well to your diversity of thought there. And identifies with the gender equality issue. Even people who do not identify as feminists, like Jacqueline Glenn, for example. Uh, so you don't know Jacqueline Glenn, then? <laughs> you just said everyone you know identifies as a feminist, and Jacqueline Glenn doesn't identify as a feminist. I, I, I don't know if this is a matrix of slips of the tongue or if your brain just slipped a long time ago and has not got up. Still know what the word feminism means and say that they identify with that ideal. You mean they legitimately believe in equality of the sexes, 
but they don't identify as feminists. You mean they're not sexist and they're not feminists. Wait a minute! If you are not a feminist, you are a sexist by definition. Even people who do not identify as feminists, like Jacqueline Glenn, for example. <laughs> I'm going to ask you very slowly, Aaron. Is Jacqueline Glenn a sexist? Or is she magically able to be both not a feminist and not a sexist? Is she one of those exceptions to the otherwise infallible rule? <laughs> is she one of those earmarked heathens who is protected by your ordained blessings? Oh, Father, <laughs> how many Hail Marys did that take? Okay, fine. If there are extremists within that group, they should be contended with by that group because obviously people outside that group have failed every attempt to address that. So it needs to be addressed and corrected from within. Do you not agree? Interesting point. I think that's another thing we'll consider for later on in the conversation. And to answer your question, yes. For instance, I think the entertainment industry and the educational institutions and the legal system would all be better off if they handled their affairs without any interference from feminists and social justice warriors. Given that feminists and social justice warriors are experts in nothing but lying and bloviating. As such, I'd like to see them absent in any institutions that do not necessarily involve lying and bloviating. Ah, a boy can dream. I, 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 I... When you say within, you mean the, within the feminist movement, they should try and make sure Absolutely. that it's not. Yeah, I agree. Yes, obviously up to feminists yeah. to Extremists make sure Extremists within the feminist movement should be addressed and corrected by the feminist movement itself. I completely agree, and it doesn't seem to be happening. <laughs> no, it's not happening. For instance, Aaron here is a dictionary-thumping fundamentalist feminist who would sooner shove half of reality up his ass while eating the other half than reconsider his religion's divine authority for one fucking second. And the other feminists are not calling him out because most of the other feminists are on the same page. That page of the fucking dictionary where feminism can do no wrong and nothing bad can ever be done in feminism's name because it says so in the good book. It clearly indicates otherwise in the very next passage of the book, but whatever, I don't like that cherry examples of prominent feminists who are doing much I've more than it. seeking gender equality. I've done it. When it was brought up to me that 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 that, that certain uh, people had wanted to advocate, for example, that, uh, that nobody could be allowed to attend one of the atheist conferences in sexualized clothing. <laughs> no sexualized clothing, Aaron. Did a feminist propose no sexualized clothing? A feminist. Are you telling me that one or more feminists tried to ban self-expression? Or oh, free speech or something? <laughs> How would feminism lead someone to that conclusion? How do you get from equality of the genders to no sexual clothing allowed? That seems like quite a leap, doesn't it? Maybe... Maybe feminism's not quite as simple as that one and only definition you're convinced it is. Maybe it might be slightly more accurate to say feminism is the hyper-traditionalist notion that women are victims of everything and it's all men's fault. I said, no, they, they, you know, I objected to that. I said, no, this is we're talking about adults. They get to dress however they want. They have to decide what is going to be, you know, legal and, and, and morally appropriate. This is up to human judgment. Yes, it's funny how you were arguing with a feminist and you found yourself up against a softcore precursor to Sharia law. <laughs> so how could that possibly have been a feminist saying that? How could that possibly have been an equal rights advocate proposing that. It's out of interest, have you ever 
heard a men's rights advocate express any qualms at all with any adults dressing sexually. No. And they don't think anyone should be forced to support a family. Shit, it's not looking good, is it? And if they what? step out of the bounds of what, of what you know, the, the, you know, the, the culture will tolerate, well, then that's up to them. You honestly never hear how sinister you sound, do you? What do they want? Like people with hats with buckles on their hats? and sort of I don't know what sexualized <laughs> clothing means. You, know, I, I... you don't know what sexualized clothing means. Yes, you do, Aaron. It's that thing that's banned in the religious countries. Yes? Stop being willfully ignorant for the sake of excusing these authoritarian erotomaniacs infesting your fucking religion. This is how totalitarianism happens. Slowly, one increment at a time, while you desperately pretend it's not happening. Leave it up to the individual. Let them figure out what is appropriate for society. If this is what you believe, then why the fuck are you a feminist? If you're going by the dictionary definition there, Aaron, and you've made it quite abundantly clear that you are going to the ends of the fucking earth with the dictionary definition, that I, you, let's pull it up again, shall we? You'll notice there is nothing in this definition about the rights or interests of the individual. Not a sausage, Aaron, not a morsel of a hash brown. So if you define your moral compass around the individual rather than the social collective, then guess what is most definitely not the ideology for you, Aaron? There is no mention of woman here, let alone human. It's just women. Feminism is collectivist by your own definition, your own somewhat adamant definition. And this is why it makes perfect sense for a feminist to want women dressed in burqas because it's for their own good. I mean, I mean, you seem to be detached from what I mean, the YouTube, what I experienced as being the YouTube sort of the feminist. The problem is, I gave a definition of what I meant. I said, you know, I believe that women should have social, economic and political equality. Women. I was very, I was very concise and specific about that. Yes, and then you were very concise and specific about completely contradicting it. But because I used the F word label, which still correctly applies, then every video that I've ever uploaded since in three years has had commenters highlighting the internal logical inconsistency in what you're saying and pointing out that this kind of thing often leads to totalitarianism. Yes has constantly had haters barraging. This is yet another reason why we don't like feminism, Aaron. Entirely regardless of the dictionary definition. It is a practical observation. See, when you're talking to a non-feminist and you prove them wrong about something, they sometimes go, shit, I didn't realize I was wrong. I'd better adjust my worldview so it's at least logically consistent. But when you prove a feminist wrong, what do they call it? Whenever you use airtight logic or factual data to refute the statements of a feminist, that feminist will define that refutation as hate. And they will act either like that is a logically sound argument or that it is better than a logically sound argument. Because emotion, they will drag you all the way down to you are a misogynist for saying two plus two is four. There is no lose state for a feminist. Either they are winning or their opponent is somehow cheating. Either they are right about everything or their opponent is a big nasty doo-doo head whose feet smell and they should be arrested for harassment. So 
It's rather laughable to say you weren't involved in atheism plus, Aaron. This is why it happened. Because of this shit. Still not deliberately not understanding that. I don't know how stupid you have to be to have it explained to you so many times and still not get it. But it's a little annoying at this point. I've got quite a lot of things to save up for later, haven't I? Yeah, I can understand. Because I'm not... I'm not yeah, a huge... if you're using feminism in the sense of gender equality, yes, and you say that's what you mean by feminism, then obviously it's a Yeah, and that's what everybody you... I know means. Well, and well... I don't know anybody, and I've never met anybody who means anything other than that. It... Except, of course, for those feminists you just alluded to, who define feminism as an excuse to ban women from wearing sexualized clothing. You just used them as a real life example of the bad feminists who, in your opinion, are doing feminism wrong. So are there or are there not feminists who are doing equality wrong and doing it in the name of feminism? And does this or does this not disprove your insistent axiom that every feminist you've ever encountered has the best of intentions by definition, Aaron. If you go to all the leading feminist organizations, you know, you know uh, uh, women, what, what is that? Wow, or what, 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 all of the different magazines or whatever that. Wow is a festival. Now is an organization. How you got from any of that to some fucking magazines is beyond me. That promote feminists, that's all what they mean as well. I, d I don't know who you're talking about, Aaron. And neither do you. You have no idea what or who you're talking about. Yeah, just like most religious believers, you are the group least educated in your own religion. But what I end up getting is that me and the tens of thousands of other people who agree with me... Argument from authority and popularity, which I can hit you right back with if that's what we're doing. ...are somehow refuted by the one weird outlier or the, some, some little group of 12 people in Scandinavia somewhere. Anita Sarkeesian has a quarter of a million subscribers. Maybe your friends should argue with her friends about the importance of individual choice. Who have some different idea. Like I heard about some group in Germany that says that feminists can't be feminists unless they're communist. What the hell? Where did communism ever fit into this? Yeah, Thunderfoot succinctly made this point without even saying anything. <laughs> he, he has the inclination to do the editing and the research, but... I have the vitriol to actually yell at you. You, Aaron, approach feminism as an individualist. Sarkeesian approaches it as a collectivist. And given that your holy scripture, the dictionary, specifically says women, not woman, which one of you is interpreting that scripture? literally and faithfully. Yeah, it's Anita. And that's why she's more popular than you. An individualistic religion is massively handicapped in the shadow of a collectivist religion. Collectivists are simply more ruthless. I mean, they have less ruth. Find me a feminist called Ruth. She's probably the chosen one. Right? Obviously, this is an outlier group. Obviously, this doesn't represent the movement at all. These are not what I was talking about. And I was very clear about what I was talking about. You haven't been in the least bit clear. Aaron, believing internally inconsistent things is not clear. Simultaneously professing two mutually contradictory things is not clear. Ophthalmologists refer to that as double vision. It would be malpractice to call it clear. 
And as a professional doctor of words, it would be negligent of me, Aaron, not to diagnose you with double think. So if anybody wants to talk to me about this, they need to be telling me that, that women should not deserve social, economic, and political equality. And if they're not talking about that, then they need to shut the fuck up because they're talking about something other than what I specified. Do, but they also call it feminism, Aaron. I know you didn't mean this, but you're accidentally arguing with feminists now. Feminists who have a different definition of feminism to you. And they're not going to shut the fuck up. Aaron, ever. In fact, they're going to call you a misogynist for telling them to shut the fuck up. Accidentally. <laughs> They'll get an article published about how Aaron Ra wants to silence women online. And they will legally force you to shut the fuck up. And they'll do it all in the name of achieving social equality to men. It's like you keep handing out free sharpened swords to women and saying, go get those evil straight white men. And then you wonder why one day you wake up with a fucking sword in your gut. Well, guess what? All of Europe is now waking up with a sword in its gut. Because of the same blind, twisted cultural suicide as that. And you're next. If your people are weak enough to fall for feminism, then they're weak enough to fall for Islam. Watch the sky. And then watch this next clip. It's sen fucking sational. I understand that I've heard stories about some weird outlier factions that believe in, you know, in, in, in hating men or whatever. But this clearly is not representative of the entire group. And it certainly doesn't fit the definition that I've given for what I'm talking about, which is the only definition that anybody ever gives. That was an uncut clip, Aaron. And it was 20 seconds of acute intellectual disaster. You went from some feminists are like that to not all feminists are like that. And then you pulled in at your final terminus. No feminists are like that. You got from some R to none R. Uh, some disproves none, doesn't it? The existence of some disproves the claim of none existing, doesn't it? But you did it. You got from there to there in three easy steps and two easy transitions. You made feminist man hatred not exist. Aaron, why, why would it make any sense for someone who professes a belief in equality of the sexes? Why, why would it make sense for such a person to exclusively hate men? It, it only makes sense if hating men is consistent with the established feminist philosophy of what equality is. I.e., if you believe in an unfalsifiable conspiratorial power structure like the patriarchy. The dictionary does not define Christianity in relation to the Inquisition. And the dictionary does not define feminism in relation to patriarchy. And that, Aaron, is because the dictionary is not a sufficient reference text 
for defining ideologies. If you want to learn broadly about Judaism or Sikhism or capitalism, you don't just read the entry in the dictionary and then go, whoop, that's it. That's all I'll ever need to know. That is not what the dictionary is for. The dictionary is for people who have never even heard that word before. It's basically a children's book. Or a foreign language speaker's book. When adults, English speaking adults, want to learn more than two fucking sentences about an ideology, they go to things called encyclopedias and historical documentation. These things used to be rare and expensive, but now they are abundant and free of charge online. And as are countless reams of statistics, along with the live streamed thoughts and opinions of the actual human beings who are part of the statistics. So given all this, if a grown ass adult who refuses to define their ideology as anything but the dictionary's two mutually optional sentences about it. Okay, that person is literally definable, Aaron, as a scriptural fundamentalist. You don't care what people say. You don't care what people do. You don't care what goes on in reality. You only care what goes on between the pages of a holy book. And you will tear out every passage in your scientific textbooks before you even think of discarding those holy verses in the dictionary. I'm slipping out of the angry stage and feeling little else but sadness. But I'm not sad for you. I'm sad for the species we share. It's not looking good. Clearly, I am not part of a hate group, but they want to associate me with one, even though they've had many different times where I've explained exactly what I mean. And clearly, I am not in the in the confines of the ridiculous little box that they've made up for me. One last treasure for the trove I'm going to present later. And now, finally, it's time for later. Take it away, Aaron. I realize that if you look up under the, the Southern Poverty Law Center, you will actually see the men's rights activists and a number of other anti-feminist organizations officially listed as hate groups. So it's not just me saying that, it's his ignorant ass not knowing that. The Southern Poverty Law Center, you say? Okay, well, let me just, first of all, let me just close this, this dictionary tab here. <laughs> we won't be needing that holy text anymore, all of a sudden, for some fucking reason. Alrighty, the Southern Poverty Law Center. Okay, let's, let's, let's just do five fucking seconds of research here. It's a pleasure to welcome back to the program Mark Potok, senior fellow at the Southern Poverty Law Center and editor in chief of their intelligence report. Mark, we've been talking a lot lately about uh, men's rights activism and uh, sort of concurrently, although they do distinguish themselves, the anti feminist movement in the United States and Canada. And back in the spring of 2012, the intelligence report from the SPLC put out sort of a statement about some groups within the men's rights activism sphere that you guys are watching. But correct me if I'm wrong, you did not designate them as hate groups. That's true. There was a lot of confusion at the time. Uh, simply, we wrote an article that was very critical uh, of many of the websites and the people behind them in the so-called manosphere, uh, these men's rights organization. But we did not uh, list any of them as hate groups, and we haven't to this day. So it's not just me saying that. It's his ignorant ass not knowing that. So what does the dictionary say about feminism? Well... Half of the definition is the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. Therefore, that is the only definition that has ever existed, and no one has ever defined it any other way. I'm a good boy! I'm a good boy! And if you disagree with me, you hate me and you hate women. I, just, I, I wonder what the Holy Scripture says 
about men's rights activism. So we take a look, shall we? Well, it says here, it's a practice that emphasizes action in support of something that the plural of man should be morally or legally allowed to have, get, or do. I mean, presumably, Aaron, you knew this already, given that there are rather striking clues to all three of these words right there in the definition of feminism. Uh, do you see them, Aaron? Aaron, are you listening? Aaron, do you see? Do, are you listening, Aaron? One more time. This is what men's rights activism means according to your holy scripture. Sorry, what? Oh, I don't know anything about that and I'm not involved. But tell you what, four years ago, a social justice think tank didn't define men's rights activism as a hate group. And therefore, men's rights activism is defined as a hate group. And that is the only definition that has ever existed and no one has ever defined it any other way. I'm a bad man. And if you disagree with me, you just hate me and you hate women. Full circle. You are brainwashed beyond reasonable doubt. When you define feminism, you ignore everything except a single passage in the dictionary. And when you define men's rights activism, you throw the dictionary away and you ignore everything except a lie told four years ago by feminists. I'm now going to amass my collection of saved clips, Aaron. So you're going to spend the next minute of this video speaking on my behalf. You're going to give an impassioned description of the plight of men's rights activists and what it's like to try and do what they do in this world. And you're going to make some arguably jolly good points. So, I mean, everybody wants to just react to the label because they've been given some false information about it. And there is no point. Oh. Clearly, I am not part of a hate group, but they want to associate me with one, even though they've had many different times where I've explained exactly what I mean. And clearly, I am not in the, in the confines of the ridiculous little box that they've made up for me. If there are extremists within that group, they should be contended with by that group because obviously people outside that group have failed every attempt to address that. And that is exactly what they did do. Officially listed as hate groups. But we did not uh, list any of them as hate groups and we haven't to this day. As hate groups. But we did not. Officially listed. We did not. As hate groups. Did not. As hate did not. Groups. Did not. Hate groups. Hate groups. Did not. Hate groups. Still not deliberately not understanding that. I don't know how stupid you have to be to have it explained to you so many times and still not get it, but it's a little annoying at this point. Do you not agree? You will believe one thing for your tribe and you will believe the polar opposite for the devil tribe. And you'll do it with your conscience intact all the way. So, no, you're not a fundamentalist of the dictionary. If tomorrow the dictionary changed its definition of feminism to noun, a Western post-industrial cult of female supremacy, you would abandon the dictionary in a heartbeat and call it a patriarchal repository of institutional misogyny. And then you will probably clamp onto some random wiki on Tumblr going, it says here, feminism is the righteous fight against the evil forces of the shitlords. 
And that's the only definition anyone has ever used! This is why this video took so long. Because it takes this long to explore this fucking darkness. Not since Commissioner Slayer have I engaged with such bottomless intellectual arrogance. The, the, the kind that clarifies everything that's wrong with the world to a painfully sharp resolution. Organized supernatural religion is not the problem at all. If you take the authoritarian power away from the Bible, these people will just anoint the dictionary with those very same authoritarian powers. They will anoint whatever text suits their needs at the time. Even if it's science. They'll say, you're a misogynist for not practicing my favorite science. Anything they could get away with calling you a misogynist for challenging. <laughs> it's their only criteria. And you can tell it's their only criteria because it is inevitably where they get stuck every time. It's the wall they can't stop themselves from hitting. No, words are what I say they are. The world is what I say it is. And bam, you're a misogynist for disagreeing with me. It works in any context. It's more effective than logic. It's more effective than science. It's more effective than any religion. I mean, you're a joke, Aaron. But you're a joke from which the humor quickly and thoroughly drains. I honestly thought David Futrell was the most shameful, hypocritical, worthless collection of cancerous bladder cells I'd ever encountered. But you take it. You really do. Futrell is a worm, but at least he doesn't pretend to be anything but a hack blogger. You think you're a fucking intellectual. And that's what makes you one of the most aggressively stupid people. This is even possible for nature to create. The, I, I grew up in the countryside. Right? The, the English countryside. The, I've met some unbelievably stupid people. But none of them are as stupid as you. Because they only have the drive of a st stupid person. You have the drive of an intelligent person, but you devote it to willful ignorance. You're like a strong, healthy person who only uses their power to beat the shit out of other people. You're worse than weak. You are a weakener. Stupid people sometimes know they're stupid. Right? But you remain convinced at all times that you're the smartest person in the room. Even when you are saying the stupidest shit anyone over the age of three has ever said. You're not just an ignorant hick. You are a practitioner of deliberate ignorance. You heard of kingmakers. You are a hick maker. You are much, much worse than a run-of-the-mill hillbilly. You can't just keep your stupidity to yourself. You have to suck out everyone else's intelligence. You are an absolutely appalling excuse for an intellectual. I don't know. I would sooner trust any human being's education to a gap-toothed inbred creationist with a mole in his beard than to you. Because you lack the critical thinking skills of the average mole. And anyone who ever admired you should feel embarrassed for ever giving any attention to the suckered windbag you've either become or always have been. Almost felt pity there. I almost felt some pity there. Almost. But no, it's still, it's still face, dude. It's like theatrically evil. <laughs> if you if you had a sweet little neotenous face, you might have got away with this, but events have conspired to make it almost neurologically impossible to have any sympathy for you. You talk like a medieval silverback warlord, and the fact that you also look like one is the last nail in the coffin. Future generations will look at this video and think, holy fucking shit. That guy existed. 
He looks and sounds like the brain-damaged reincarnation of Genghis Khan. And all you guys were busy with was saying Donald Trump is Hitler. I despair. I do. I, I, you know, I, I do. I, I, I you know, despair professionally at this point. I'm lucky that that counts as content. But... I can't actually handle any more of you, and I'm done. Uh, R.I.P. the so-called skeptic community. Speaking of which, Mikeru's still dealing with the usual vexatious litigation from the usual suspects. Mikeru rocks and has rocked for years, and he very nearly got destroyed. Go support him, and shit. And anyone, anyone who's willing to stand up to this utter fucking wank. There is no identity that means free thinker. Not truly. Not even free thinker. <laughs> There's nothing left to trust in memes. It's like there's nothing left to trust in genes. It's just us. It's just humans. Information doesn't care about us. <laughs> so make information your servant, not your master. You dig? Alright. I will also dig. 